Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us here on this Monday morning on Up With Crim. I'm Channing Curtis. Let's get right to the forecast with meteorologist Thomas Patrick because Thomas, we're starting off a new work week, but also a new month as well. Ooh, new month. That means it's April Fool's Day. That's right. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, by the way, it is also Dingus Day, which is a po fun Polish holiday. It's always the day after Easter. Think of it like a second St. Patrick's Day and Honestly, that sounds a lot better than April Fool's Day because I was always the one getting pranked on in school. Here we are right now. It's actually mostly cloudy over uh, Spokane at the moment. Might not see a whole lot of the sunrise, but that's not going to stop the sunshine from giving us a mostly sunny day. Just a few extra clouds right here during the morning hours. Did drop just to 29 in Deer Park, 30 in Sandpoint, and it's at 31 in Pullman, so a few spots just below the freezing mark for this morning. But the sunshine is back out for the rest of the morning, midday, and afternoon hours as temperatures keep climbing all the way until the 60s for this afternoon. Well, a heads up to Spokane drivers this morning, starting at 7 a.m., the crews will begin two projects for 29th Avenue between Grand Boulevard and Ray Street. The city says that there will be delays next to the Lincoln Heights Shopping Center, so if you're heading in that direction, just be prepared for some delays. We did speak with some businesses on 29th who say that they are worried about how these projects will impact their customers. The traffic closures are stressful for us in particular uh, because we are a small kind of out of the way business. I know it's all temporary, but you know, it takes it takes everything we can get just to keep this place moving. Some businesses say they're concerned they'll be quote forgotten about due to the inconvenience of detours. Work is expected to be finished though in August. At 602, let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. Another round of reservations to visit Mount Rainier National Park this summer open up this morning. Timed entry reservations for both the Paradise and Sunrise corridors will be required between the hours of 7 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon. The park says it's trying to control how many people are in the park at once because of an increase in popularity. Jury selection begins today for the murder trial of Chad Daybell. Daybell faces three counts of murder in the deaths of his first wife and two of his second wife's children. Ahead of the trial, the judge in the case issued a gag order preventing lawyers involved in the trial from speaking with the media. And both the Spokane Fire Department and Spokane Police are now investigating a possible arson in the Perry District. According to Spokane Fire, it started on Saturday night on East 7th Avenue and South Helena Street near the Parkview Apartments. Thankfully, no one was injured, but there was some smoke damage to a nearby building. And that's a look at your morning rush. Well, talk about an incredible send off. All these fans showed up in Pullman to make sure that the Washington State women felt the love as they head to Indianapolis. Today, they're facing off against Illinois in the semifinals of the WBIT. And this morning, our sports anchor Andrew Quinn joins us with a preview of the big game. At this point, the Washington State women's basketball team is just happy that it has another game to play this season. The Cougs have played with a renewed energy since the committee left them out of the NCAA tournament. WSU had big wins over Lamar and Santa Clara before a tight game with Toledo last week where Bella Murakatete played hero with a game-winning jumper with just three seconds remaining. The Cougs are excited to still be playing basketball heading into the month of April. We're set for the moment and excited that our players get to play another game and thrilled to be playing a, a great opponent in Illinois. It's just another experience to play with our team and showcase that we deserve to play in March and we want to play in March. So yeah, just another opportunity to show that. The Cougs and the Illinois Fighting Illini will tip it off at 2 p.m. You can catch that game on ESPNU and then bring it back over to Crim 2 where we'll have your highlights and post game reaction. That's all for sports. Well, this morning, we now know who is heading to Phoenix for the Final Four in the East. Top seeded UConn show why they are the clear favorites to repeat as champs as they easily defeated Illinois 77 to 52. They will next take on four seed Alabama on Saturday at 549 p.m. And one seed Purdue also stamped their ticket to the Final Four on Sunday with a big 72 to 66 win over Tennessee. They will next face off against NC State on Saturday at 309 p.m. 
And let's talk a little bit about NC State for a sec, because hardly anyone expected this year's Cinderella squad to make it this far in the tournament. NC State defeated Duke 76-64 to to advance to their first Final Four since their 1983 miracle run when they upset Houston to win the national title. The Wolf Pack will next have, will have a tough test rather against Purdue and Zach Eady in the Final Four. Both games are airing on TBS. Well, getting to some breaking news this morning at 605, two Spokane police officers shot and killed a man last night on Westine Avenue. Police say they were responding to a house fire that may have been started by arson. So this morning, our Brandon T. Jones is following this investigation for us. So Brandon, can you tell us more about what happened last night? Yeah, good morning, Channing. Well, we know that a call came in to law enforcement and first responders around 9.57 p.m. last night of a neighbor calling in to let them know about a house that was on fire. They heard people screaming inside, and from now, you can't see much of a presence out here anymore besides a couple of street signs on, on out on the ground, but we know they got that call. They responded, and fire crews and police were both here on scene where they found several people inside. Once each person was in the home was accounted for, police say they learned the incident was a possible arson attack and that the person of interest was unaccounted for. During their interviews with the people removed from the house, they say one of the individuals was not cooperating and began walking away. And then that's when they say they began to detain the male who then discharged a firearm or gun of some sorts. They say they responded by those two officers responding and shooting their weapons, killing the man. And now we do know that the Spokane Independent Investigative Response Team will conduct an investigation. They said life-saving measures were performed on that male, but he did lose his life. They also reported that no other person was injured in either the fire or through that shooting. But once we get any type of new information, any new details, we'll continue to keep you updated as well. For now, reporting live, Brandon T. Jones, Crim2 News. Well, heads up, Bloomies. Today, the Bloomsday registration fee price goes up to $35. That goes for both the in-person and the virtual registration options. Bloomsday, of course, takes place on Sunday, May 5th. And if you are planning on running or walking Bloomsday, Crim2 will see you there along the course. Our cheering section is going to be at mile seven again this year, and you won't be able to miss us, I promise, with our big smiles, our waving, and of course, all of the fun signs that we'll have out there to motivate you to get across that finish line. A consumer alert this morning for anyone who has AT&T phone service. The company says the personal information of more than 70 million customers, both past and present, has been breached. So that includes for things like social security numbers, birth dates, and mailing addresses dating back to 2019. The company says it is working to notify people who have been impacted and resetting their passcodes. Now, if you have not heard from AT&T, or even if you have, there are several steps that you can take right now if you think that you've been hacked. One, of course, important step is to change your password right away. Also, ask for a credit reporting agency to put a fraud alert on your account and consider a credit freeze to block someone from opening a credit card in your name. It is 609 on this Monday morning where there's a bit of some cloud cover that is drifting through the inland northwest right now. You might still be able to see the last quarter moon, which has just risen over the eastern uh, horizon, but it looks like conditions are going to be just a little cloudy for a handful of hours for this morning. Nothing worse than that. That'll be kind of the worst that we see all day today. Oh no, the sunrise is a little bit more dull than normal, but we do have plenty of sunshine for today expected through the day. 63 degrees, the high temperature and even warmer yet tomorrow. Temperatures peak on Tuesday at 69 with plenty of areas flirting with 70 degrees. And then it all kind of comes back into the 50s with those scattered shower chances. And we'll show you where those shower chances are coming from in your full forecast in just a few minutes.